Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Reynaldo Rivera Ortiz? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Reynaldo Rivera Ortiz Jr. was born in April 1963 and lived in the state of Texas. In 1989, he graduated from the University of Texas Medical Branch School of Medicine. In 1991, he became a licensed physician and completed his residency in anesthesiology in 1993. In 1999, Reynaldo was arrested for allegedly assaulting his wife. In 2005, a girlfriend obtained a protective order against him. In 2014, Reynaldo was arrested for assault after an argument with his girlfriend in front of his neighbor. In April 2015, he shot the neighbor's dog because the neighbor helped his girlfriend obtain a restraining order against him. In 2016, Reynaldo was sentenced to 29 days in jail for this offense. Amazingly, this did not affect his ability to practice medicine. He continued working as a physician. Reynaldo owned two businesses in connection with the medical field and functioned as an anesthesiologist in two facilities. One was the Baylor Scott and White Surgicare, North Dallas. The other was the North Garland Surgery Center. In November 2020, a patient at the Garland facility suffered serious complications during anesthesia. In April 2021, Reynaldo relinquished his medical staff membership at that facility. The Texas Medical Board determined that Reynaldo made several mistakes during the incident. For example, he did not respond to the patient's issues in an appropriate manner, failed to document critical events, and failed to recognize inadequate oxygenation and ventilation. In August 2022, Reynaldo entered into an agreement with the board. He was to be supervised at his expense by a physician selected by the board, pay a penalty of $3,000, complete 16 hours of continuing education, and retake an exam on medical jurisprudence. Before making this agreement, Reynaldo was already in trouble for another incident. This one occurred at the Baylor Scott and White facility in Dallas on May 19, 2022. A patient under his care stopped breathing during a routine procedure. Physicians at the facility came to believe that Reynaldo failed to maintain the patient's airway and failed to document critical aspects of the incident. The investigation was something that Rinaldo was not happy about. He told a fellow physician that the facility was trying to crucify him and the financial impact if he lost his position there would be devastating. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On June 21, 2022, an anesthesiologist named Melanie Casper, who worked with Rinaldo at the Dallas facility, was not feeling well. She took an IV bag from the facility and went home where she treated herself for dehydration using the bag. Not long after this, she screamed to her husband to call for an ambulance. Melanie went into cardiac arrest and died before first responders arrived. In August of 2022, an autopsy report was completed. It indicated that Melanie died from bupivacaine toxicity. This is a drug used in regional anesthesia procedures and not injected into veins. The authorities found Melanie's death to be suspicious. Upon further investigation, officers learned that there were 11 suspicious cardiac incidents at the Dallas facility since late May 2022. These incidents involved patients experiencing unexpected complications during routine procedures. A pattern emerged which involved an unremarkable but long surgery where additional IV bags would be retrieved from a device called a warmer. When these bags were administered to the patient, blood pressure would spike. The life of the patient was saved through emergency intervention. The first bag used in the surgery did not come from the warmer, therefore it seemed like only bags in the warmer may have been tampered with. None of the incidents occurred during surgeries where Reynaldo was the anesthesiologist. In September 2022, Reynaldo Ortiz was arrested in connection with tampering with the IV bags. His trial started in early 2024. On April 12, he was found guilty on four counts of tampering with consumer products resulting in serious bodily injury, five counts of intentional adulteration of a drug, and one count of tampering 
with a consumer product. At the time of making this video, Reynaldo is facing up to 190 years in prison. A sentencing date has not been scheduled. Now moving to my analysis. Reynaldo Ortiz maintains his innocence. His defense argued that he was a convenient scapegoat because of his disciplinary history and financial problems. The prosecution argued that the strong circumstantial evidence against Reynaldo proved his guilt definitively. This brings me to the question, was Reynaldo guilty of tampering with the IV bags? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that he was guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. Reynaldo had both a disciplinary and a criminal history. During the time of the instance, he was being investigated for allegedly causing harm to a patient. Reynaldo told another physician that the investigation could result in financial disaster for him. It appears as though Reynaldo was living above his means. He had a $1.3 million home and owned three Mercedes and one Corvette. Reynaldo owned two businesses, which owed $3 million to the IRS. The gross revenue from his businesses dropped from $9 million in 2017 to $4 million in 2021. There were 11 serious cardiac incidents at the Dallas facility from May to August 2022 that were highly suspicious. This is a very high number of cardiac incidents in such a short period of time. For example, the facility only transferred five patients for emergency treatment for the entire year of 2021. On May 24, 2022, Reynaldo was advised that he was under investigation for the May 19 incident. There was a suspicious cardiac incident on May 26 and another on May 27. So two and three days after he was informed that he was in trouble, patients were having unexplained cardiac problems during surgery. On June 21, the anesthesiologist Melanie Casper died at home after treating herself for dehydration with an IV bag taken from the facility. The drug bupifacaine was detected in the bag. On June 22, 2022, Reynaldo had a meeting regarding the May 19 incident. Five days later, on June 27, there was another suspicious cardiac incident at the facility. Other incidents occurred in July and August. Reynaldo had been at the facility a few days before each incident. He went on vacation from July 23 to July 28. During that time, there were no suspicious cardiac incidents. On July 29, he returned to work. On August 1, there was another incident. The facility had a camera at the end of the hallway where the main operating rooms are located. Some of the video recorded by this camera was recovered by law enforcement. On August 4, 2022, at 11.35 a.m., the camera captured Reynaldo exiting an operating room and walking toward the IV bag warmer while carrying an IV bag. He placed the bag in the warmer, looked both directions, then walked away quickly. Not long after this, he opened the warmer and looked inside before quickly closing it. At 12.11 p.m., a nurse obtained an IV bag from the warmer for a cosmetic surgery on a 56-year-old female. This was the first time anyone accessed the warmer since Reynaldo. When the IV bag that was retrieved by the nurse was used, the patient developed severe hypertension and cardiac arrhythmias. On August 9, 2022, at 10.19 a.m., the surveillance camera once again captured Reynaldo putting an IV bag into the warmer. At 10.54 a.m., an employee retrieved the bag and took it to an operating room where a 78-year-old male was having surgery on his wrist. At 11.02 a.m., the patient's blood pressure increased dramatically. On August 19, 2022, Reynaldo placed an IV bag in the warmer at 10.34 a.m. The bag was retrieved at 10.42 a.m. It was administered to a 54-year-old female who was having cosmetic surgery on her abdomen. Her blood pressure increased dramatically at 11 a.m. On August 23, 2022, at 8.30 a.m., Reynaldo Ortiz placed an IV bag into the warmer. At 11.49 a.m., the warmer was restocked with fresh bags. On the next day, August 24, an 18-year-old male had his heart rate and blood pressure increased dramatically during a surgery to repair a deviated septum. The IV bags that were used during this surgery were examined and small puncture holes were identified. One bag contained bupifacaine, lidocaine, and epinephrine. Two other bags contained bupifacaine and lidocaine. None of the bags were supposed to have any of those drugs in them. 
Reynaldo had access to all the IV bags and all the drugs involved in these suspicious cardiac incidents. On one occasion, Reynaldo was captured on video surveillance, filling syringes with the same drugs that were found in the IV bags. His behavior of placing bags in the warmer was highly unusual. Typically, the warmer was stocked by staff members from cardboard boxes containing IV bags, which were supplied from an outside company. This company did not receive any complaints about IV bags that had been tampered with. The patients who had the unexpected cardiac problems were being treated by physicians who were on the board investigating Reynaldo. None of Reynaldo's patients were involved in any of these suspicious cardiac incidents. A nurse said that Reynaldo did something strange in August 2022 during a surgery. She received a bag from the warmer and he waved it off. He was using IV bags that he had retrieved personally. This was highly out of the ordinary. Moving to the exculpatory factors. The only IV bags that were tested were connected to the physician who died and the 18-year-old patient who had cardiac problems. There is no way to know for certain if the other cardiac incidents were caused by the drugs. If the IV bags had actually been tampered with, technically somebody other than Reynaldo could have been responsible. Maybe someone was trying to frame him. When considering all the evidence in this case, do I think that Reynaldo Ortiz was guilty? Yes, I believe he was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Reynaldo was impulsive, incompetent, self-centered, irresponsible, angry, vindictive, sadistic, cold, callous, remorseless, and had a sense of entitlement. The investigation at the Dallas facility was jeopardizing his ability to earn money. He decided to poison IV bags with various drugs in order to cause serious and undesirable outcomes for patients. The idea here was to demonstrate how this could happen to any physician. Like whatever was happening to these physicians was what happened to Reynaldo. He was just another victim of some systemic and undetected problem. It didn't have anything to do with his level of competence. Rather, it was affecting everyone. Essentially, Reynaldo was trying to explain his negative patient outcome from May 19, 2022. It's possible that he did not intend to cause anyone's death. Reynaldo believed that the IV bags would only be used on patients who were having surgeries. Their symptoms would be vigorously treated. It never occurred to Reynaldo that one of his colleagues would take a poisoned IV bag home and use it on herself. To Reynaldo, the lives of the patients did not matter. He was indifferent to their suffering. It was all about him, all about proving that he was a victim too. Reynaldo could not become a competent physician, but he was able to make it appear as though the other physicians were as incompetent as him. The lack of an ability to elevate himself was inconvenient, but he compensated by dragging others down to his level. For him, that was good enough. All that mattered was being exonerated. It's also possible that this entire plot was simply about revenge. If the physicians were going to damage Reynaldo's reputation by conducting a legitimate investigation, then he was going to damage theirs. Now moving to my final thoughts. Typically, physicians have a low level of neuroticism. For example, they do not tend to have much anxiety. This allows them to stay calm under pressure which is a good characteristic in their line of work, but it can become problematic under certain circumstances. When looking at personality traits, it is critical to consider how they interact with each other. For example, if high conscientiousness is combined with high sensation seeking, the conscientiousness may regulate how far the person will go to find excitement. It's kind of like a safety feature. The conscientiousness regulates how bad the sensation seeking will get. It's also possible that certain traits can alter the expression of other traits and lead to an outcome that is more pronounced or hazardous. For example, Reynaldo may have had a few psychopathic traits, like being cold and callous. If these traits had been filtered through high neuroticism, like being depressed, angry, anxious, and unable to resist temptation, the outcome probably would have been Reynaldo getting arrested quickly after committing an obvious and dramatic crime. This is often how people think of antisocial traits. The same traits that lead to the criminal behavior lead to getting caught. In this case, however, Reynaldo appeared to have low neuroticism, again, consistent with being a physician. This meant that the expression of his psychopathic traits was deliberate, calculated, and insidious. He was the most frightening type of offender, one in a tremendous position of power and trust who was willing to calmly perpetrate crimes 
to meet a selfish objective. Through his tampering with IV bags, he was like poison ivy. Anything he touched became irritated, yet he was unaffected. Those are my thoughts on the case of Reynaldo Rivera Ortiz. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.